I'm with my dogs, man on Dean Jaga, Spada Bada in a push, bus up for the hot You don't wanna go to court. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on whatever time it is that you are going to be catching this podcast. Welcome to the BTC podcast, where it's all about creativity, innovation, and meaningful conversations. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to press play, and for that, we are so thankful to have you here. I'm your official host. My name is Gedi Mulusiwa, Gedi, a.k.a. Lizoti, a.k.a. Lizo, Zo, and we've got a very special guest joining us today. This man is a man who's had a rap career spanning over 15 years now and has announced I think since last year that he's going to be leaving the rap scene. I think we want to know why that decision was taken. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Pretty Ugly! (laughs) What's up, Queen? How are you? Hi, I'm good. How have you been? Great. I'm exhausted. Yeah. You know, we've been here like two days, but like we've, we've, we, yo, it's been a jam packed two days. It feels like it's been a week. Yeah. But it's been beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So you're also many things. Yeah. You're a husband, yes, you're ma'am. a dad, uh-huh. you're a content creator, and you're also a fashionista. I think we can speak on I you mean, being a, you, uh, you somewhat so a drip I mean, I god. Try. I try. Yeah. I try. Because you dress really well. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And how is that like, you know, having so many hats, wearing very different hats also, sure. and trying to navigate yeah. those many different features? Field, how do you do it? I think what's simple is that I, I'm just myself. Mm. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pretending to be anyone else. I'm not trying to. I'm not putting on a mask. Like this is this is how I dress. I don't have a stylist. I don't have some. I don't, you know, I don't have real like style inspirations. I really just dress like how I want to dress and you how know? you feel and how I feel. Uh, being a father, being a husband. Firstly, you uh-huh. know, it's like I mean, I've been with my partner. We're celebrating 15 years this oh, year. Oh wow, guys! Right? That's well, a wanna, big milestone. 15 years. I've known her 17 years. We've been married for five years. Uh-huh. Um, we have a beautiful four-year-old baby girl, and it's it's it's. I mean, nothing comes easy, mm. you know, uh, but because it's anointed and because we have the support of our family, Mudimo mm. and each other, it's very simple. So it's not like uh, it's not like um, I'm really in my comfort zone, mm. you know, but that's that's also not saying Jorge, I'm the best at it. Uh, I'm I'm still learning, you know. I'm I'm still learning how to be a husband, you know. Mm. I've been a boyfriend for ten years, and then we got married, and then now I've been a husband for five years. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and I've been a father. So it's like a, it's a it's an everyday learning curve. You Does know? it feel different though? Like no, actually, because nah. we we've well, my parents have been married for twenty eight years wow, now, beautiful. and what they've said to me is it's the same thing as being in a relationship. Just yeah. know that you're gonna get twice. As what you've been getting from 100%. your relationship that you had before sure. making them like your husband or your wife. So sure. how's your journey been as a husband yeah. now? Look, the transition hasn't been anything that has been felt because I'm with my best friend. Mm. And that's kind of like what we've maintained. What would have made it more difficult is if you know like there was a big difference between being boyfriend and girlfriend mm. and now as a married couple now we are you know influenced by societal norms and what society thinks a husband should do and a woman should and shouldn't do like we don't we don't go by societal standards we just go by like what we create for ourselves because ultimately a marriage is a union between two people. But even with it being a union between two people, it's the marriage of families, you know? And me and my partner, I was already close with her family for 10 years before we got married. Mm. She's been integrated into my family structure for the last 15 years as well. So it was like a real seamless transition, you know? We have a very supportive family, a very loving family. And and yeah, and like, and I can confidently say we're going to spend a lifetime together. Yeah, you know? for I sure. I said that 15 years ago, 15 years in, like I'm looking forward to the next 15 and the next 50 after that, you know? Yeah. It's, it's for life. It's for life, for yeah, real. Yeah, I love it. And now let's talk about your trip here because yeah. you're in my city. You're in Gab's Come city. Come on, out here. BW didn't yeah. yeah. How's Gab's been? It's been Is it so your first dope. time in Botswana? It is. I'm ashamed to say that. Wow. Right? It's your first time in it's BW? It's my first time. And I've been familiar with like, a lot of people from Botswana for years. You know, uh, I've known Vizo for many years. Mm-hmm. I met him in South Africa. And 
Yeah, and you know, I have a, a base in, in Botswana, mm. fan, a fan base. I mean, if I look at my Spotify analytics, it's, it lets me know how many people are listening to the music, the demographic, and there be, there's people here, you know? And uh, I don't know why we've just never come out here, you know, but we're out here, we're out here for Forbes, actually. We've been mm. here for Forbes 30, uh, under 30. My wife was, um, was speaking there. And and we figured like while we're out here, like let's 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 do PR, let's meet people, mm. let's connect. And one thing I can say about people in Botswana is that like the humility, the like boto, like, you know, it feels like home. You know, I hope you guys are not offended when we say this, but it, it feels like an extended province of South Africa. Yeah, no, you know, we I, get that a lot. I said this earlier on, like it's it's quicker for me to get to Botswana. Than it is to get to Cape Town. Facts. From where Durban I am, as you know, well. yeah. Durban, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Yep. So it's yeah, it's it's been beautiful, man. Like the love has been. You guys have embraced us and taken care of us so well. Like I can't wait to come back. Really, you please you know? do come back. I'm gonna be back. For you sure. also had a performance. Was it last night? Yeah, I did. Or oh, was it I'm this morning? No, this morning. Yeah. How did that go? Because it, I, I I'm sure it was like last minute. Also, it really was. So yeah. did you like change your wardrobe? Did you have Joe, to get like wardrobe man, done? Nah. Look, it was last minute, and I'm not here with my DJ. I've been performing with my DJ for the last 12 years. So mm -hmm. this is the first time I perform without my DJ, without doing my regular set. Mm -hmm. But the people out here have been so supportive. Shout out to my guy, Matthew. You know, he was able to organize everything. You know, shout out to DJ Kuchi out there who made sure that everything <laughs> was taken care of. And um, and DJ, DJ Bunny also, you know, DJ Bunny, you know, he contacted me. He's like, yo, please send me your music. Let's see how we can put things together. I'm like, I okay, cool. It. I don't have all the performance versions, yes. but let's see what we can do, you know? Yes. And yeah, and I mean, for the first time with the DJ that I'm, really unfamiliar with i think it was really dope man like, out of i really 10? enjoyed it out of 10 i'll give it like a solid i'll give it an eight you give it an eight yeah i'll give it an eight it could have been like a 10 i feel like if i had my proper performance mm. set and i'd been mentally prepped for it but just because of the reception and the love it was like seamless so i'll give it yeah i'll give it an eight and a half for sure yeah, yeah. no shout out to you for also you know taking it on and just saying you know what i can i Come can on. do it like yeah. why not of course yeah. yeah and um i also want to talk about um your status quo or rather <laughs> yeah. i know i don't know if it's like off the record or sure. on the record sure, yeah. but something that's been online Mm. for now over the last couple of days has yeah. been the conversation where Casper was oh, on yeah. um, El Tito's podcast <laughs> hey, and oh <laughs> you guys had gosh. the fight as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. What's your relationship now? Are you guys like really beefing or was it just a PR stunt? No, nah, it was never a beef, you know. Um, we've never had beef, you know. We're actually like neighbors. We live in the same area and uh, and he had reached out to me, you know. He was supposed to do a rematch with Knock Music. Mm. And, and I think they just weren't agreeing on whatever the terms were. But he had already locked in the date for the venue, I mean, for the date for the fight and the date and the location. And he was desperate to find somebody because the fight needed to happen that mm. night. Otherwise, he stood to lose a lot of money. And, uh, and I was one of the people that he reached out to to be like, yo, man, I know we're not in the same weight category, but would you be interested in fighting? People say, you know, you fight or whatever. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, for sure. Yeah. And obviously, you know, it was, it was difficult because we were very mismatched in weight, you know, and boxing is very strict where weight is concerned. He was about 30 kgs heavier than me. Mm. Uh, but it, we're, we're like, it's going to be fun, man. Let's make it an exhibition. It is what it is. You know, we came out of there with a loss. It happens, you know, uh, some of the greatest fighters in the world lose. Mike Tyson has <laughs> lost. Holy Vanda, Holy Field has <laughs> lost. You know what I'm saying? Um, Devin Haney, who was like, you know, who, who, who held so many titles, um, he was undisputed. Just lost a fight to Ryan Garcia a couple of weeks ago where he got knocked down a mm, couple of times. Mm. And it happens, you know, and people pick themselves up again. And, yeah, so I guess him speaking about it again, uh, Casper, that is, you know. It's just like, yeah, just take just uh, taking people on a, on a memory lane back to it. But there's really no animosity. Yeah. So love, it's respect on my end, yeah. And then why are you leaving the music scene? Sure. I'm glad you asked that. So I'm not leaving the music scene. I'm still very, very present and very active in it. Yeah. Uh, I just did speak about it being um, my last album. Mm -hmm. um, albums are very expensive to put together. Uh, people don't realize that. Look, I may wake up one day and, and feel different. Yeah. Uh, but as it stands now, I felt like every, you know, you also need to be, you need to go through things, you need to go through trials and tribulations to work. If you're a real person like me, you know, who actually puts your life into your music, you know, you actually need to experience life, you know, and and, and journal all the things that you have learned mm. 
through that whole process, you know, in the music. And, and sometimes you share it with people who are undeserving. Sometimes you share it. And sometimes we share it with people who actually learn from it, you know. But like I said, it's, it is a, it's a long process. It's, a, it's an expensive process. And right now, because my whole life has been dedicated to working on albums and projects, that's all I've done, like, my whole life, mm. you know. Now I just want to, you know, um, give people lighter package. We'll give them EPs. We'll give you singles. I'll do some more features. Okay. And maybe, maybe I'll wake up in, like, a couple of years from now and be like, you know what, actually... I think I want to release another album. But uh -huh. for now, as it stands, Dust is out. It's doing really well. Yeah, that's why I'm like, supporting. why are you stopping? Yeah. Because someone would think, no, but you're probably in your prime, your peak now. So go for in sure. harder. Facts. I yeah. mean, that's facts. I mean, I'm going to, uh, I like that. I think I should be going harder, yeah. you know? Um, and not let the things that happen in the background, you know? You know what people don't realize is that people actually go through life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? and you're only human. And there's biz there's the business of the music in the back end of it, and trying to make all those things like align sometimes doesn't come together and jow wow. Mm. You know, and I guess when I made that announcement to say it would be my last album, I was actually going through a lot of stuff in the background. You mm. know, and I guess it'll be things that um, as time goes, I'll I'll let people in more on what had been happening and that kind of thing. But I felt like. At, in that moment, it needed me to take a step back and focus on myself and my mental health and my health and my family. And my priority at the time was not working on like mm -hmm. an album, you know? But like I said, but I'm still very active. The album is out. We're rolling it out. There's still videos coming through. Uh, we're campaigning for album of the year called The Samas in South Africa, come you know? On. So come on. You're, you guys already know. Yeah, no, that's a big Don't deal. Don't play me. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. I say that respectfully and humbly. Yes. Please, guys. Ah. And then do you think hip hop is dead though in South Africa? Oh, definitely not. I mean, look at how I'm um, okay in South Africa. No. Mm. Man, I th the only thing about hip hop is that we're not mainstream right now. We're yeah. not the most mainstream. It's the Yanos. Right? It's I mean because exactly. And that's fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's perfect. But hip hop is alive and wow. If you look at like the projects that people have been releasing over the last three years, from myself to A. Reese to Nasty to Words, we have such great projects that have come out of hip hop, you know? Yes, the support is not uh is not at its peak because like I said, we're not the most mainstream genre right now. Mm. Like uh, and the industry and life works in cycles, you know? Yeah. So Nila Nakoyama yeah, house and my ning ning and then it was hip hop's turn and then now it's piano's turn. It used to be Kwaito's turn, you know, so it's ever evolving. And also if you look at it, a lot of the people that are in the piano culture are rappers. That's They're true. They're people who who made hip hop and then we're just like, okay, hey, but the I can still rap. Yeah, a lot of vocalistic, yes. you know, Casper himself. Reason transitions and rebranded. You know, young Stana. Yeah. You know, these are all rappers. So hip hop is very much alive. Even the culture, the way they dress, how they swag out, these mm. are all hip hop. Even Java himself is a hip hop guy. Yes. If you sit with Java for a, a couple of hours, the conversations you'll be having are about hip hop and rap. And, and not just local rap, internationally. Mm. And you see, like, you know what's happening internationally? Drake, Kendrick Lamar, you know, they brought hip-hop back into the conversation again, yep. you know? It's ex like people are excited to wake up in the morning and it's look at their phone. Yeah, you know, it's entertaining, yeah, it's entertaining right now, you know? Yeah, it's hot. Um, so yeah. would you go on, on I'm a Piano now? Because, I mean, you're seeing what, what, what it's doing for, for the sure. numbers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, you know, for me, it's like I'm not a, I'm not a numbers-driven person. Mm -hmm. and I've never done things for, like, metrics. Okay. I've done things for because i'm passionate about it right uh but with the question of would i hop on our piano yeah i would i mean but i've also never been like uh as much as i'm an hip i'm a hip-hop artist i'm a mouse multi-faceted uh, multi-faceted artist yo so mm, it's cool, wow. but when um yeah and i can do everything you know uh my last project the project before dust i had a project called mud so basically i had soil in 2021 we had mud in 2022 and now we have dust and our mother had a song called bototo you know mm. which is like a mixture it's a 85 bpm which mm. is you know the tempo of piano slash kwaito it's like it's got a log drum in it it's like it's low-key piano but it's a hip-hop record you know and in the past i've hopped on like kwaito type mm. instrumentals and more afrobeat stuff so it's like people can expect to hear everything and anything from me you yeah. know and i think and also me announcing that yo this is the last pretty ugly album i think it's because also people have been they expect hip-hop and the raps consistently from pretty ugly but it's like yo i can do other things you know i can also 
write for people. I can mm. also, I also got melodies. I have other ideas that I have for other people. So this was just giving me a platform to like work on music and projects that are not solely dedicated to pretty ugly, mm. you know? So I definitely will be, I mean, currently I'm working on an album. It's not my album, you know, I'm writing for another artist. So so my pen is still going to be there. There's there's people songs that you guys will be hearing that have my pen in it. I won't mention the people, you know, we, you know, we do, out of respect, we do sign NDAs with people. Oh. But we're there, you know, the publishing checks will still come to us, you yes. know? Yes. Um, yeah, so I get the image of like I'm around, you know, I'm not going nowhere. And what's your take on um, artists having ghostwriters? Um, I'm, I'm, because I'm, that I'm, means you're probably like a ghostwriter too. Yeah, yeah, but I don't like I don't like saying it's a ghostwriter. I just feel like I am a um, I'm a co-writer. Mm. You know, because uh, a lot of artists have ghostwriters, but sometimes it's not like someone actually is sitting down and penning a whole verse for you. Mm. It's like we're we're kind of. We're in a room like we are right now, and then you have an idea, and then that one that says like, no, actually, maybe if you say it like this and not like that, it's like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, I like and that. It's and all then of you us try, just coming together and it's kind of like all of us. And then together. sometimes it is you actually physically sitting down and writing, and that's perfectly fine. I think Chris Brown has come out and spoken about like, yo, I have writers. Beyonce has writers. Yeah, everybody got you know, writers. Everyone has writers. Yeah. It's just like in in. In the hip hop fraternity way, it's like shunned upon. Where it's, it's like, like offensive. You can't have it's someone. like you're not real. And I get it. As a pure, it's also like, nah, dude, write your own raps. Yeah. You know, but it's also like, guys, it's a business. You know, you don't. I mean, Drake. I I, I admire someone like Drake. You know, and I can also understand like, why well, he doesn't have time to sit down and write raps twenty four seven. It's like, dog, this is a businessman. He's got businesses and entities to keep running. You know, if his sole priority was sitting down and writing raps, it's like, when is he gonna get stuff done? So I'm sure he does right, but he has some people who have already got some reference tracks ready for him so when he hears a beat he's like okay this is the kind of flow i can take okay cool mm -hmm. and i'm sure he adds stuff to it it's not like someone writing a Fully, whole thing yeah. for him you know so i'm for it i think we need to be more open to it in the hip-hop fraternity more specifically because it gives people opportunities to collaborate you know it's like i don't particularly have to do a song with this with a particular artist i'll just mention whatever artist. let's say a boy t but like i could I could co-write with her, you mm. know? And it shouldn't be an issue that she has a writer, or she works with writers, because ultimately, it's music. Ultimately, you know? And I think collaboration is so important. Yeah, yeah. fair point. And yeah. I think somebody will also want to know what's the plan from here, because, yeah. I mean, if Dust is the last album sure. out, then what's next? For sure. Uh, expect to hear me, like, like I said, doing uh, a lot of co-writing for mm. a lot of artists. Uh, we're planning our own shows. I'm actually trying to plan a show... Um, in Botswana. Please come. All right. We're trying to, we're trying to plan a pretty ugly, um, I don't want to say one man show because I'm not, I'm not going to be the only person, you know, but I'm trying to connect and build bridges with like people here and artists here, you know, DJs, other artists. Let's connect, you know. Like I said, I mean, it's a, it's a less than a 50 minute flight from here to Joburg. Yeah. You know? It's like, it shouldn't be so difficult for us. There shouldn't be such a big disconnect. You know, we are the same people, Rama Africa, we're all, you know, we're all from Southern Africa, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, we really are one people. And you have know? you met anybody though from, from this side? Your tons, you know, I mean, we're just on the phone Maybe now. Maybe that you're interested in working with? Hey, yo, shout out to my guy, V Mambizi, for sure. Shout out to H. Uh, C? Hansi. Hansi. Yes, Hansi. Hansi. My bad, my yes, bad. Yes. Hansi, Lena, I needed to, to pay him back because he, he called me pretty ugly. <laughs> so I had to be like, oh, HC? <laughs> so shout out to my guy, Hansi, yes. Vizo, uh, Banty for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I connected with Scar the other day. Yes. You know? So yeah, we're connecting. Like we're going to, there's definitely, we're definitely bridging those gaps for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, we'll hold you to that. Also, uh, more music coming through, uh, a show, a pretty ugly live experience in South Africa. Yeah, no, I saw that Please too. Please check out uh, the social media platforms to see, you know, where you can find that. And yeah, a lot more things. Films, I'm trying to get into short films, styling and, and creative directing for other people. You know? I was going to say, what about your own brand, your own life? Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm, I'm wearing, I'm wearing, shout out to uh, Panda Power, Botswana, you know. So we'll be connecting, you know, you'll have some pretty ugly merchandise, some dust merchandise coming yeah, very soon. Word. So yeah.
And just as we wrap it up, sure. um, your advice to aspiring rappers, because you still For do sure. have people who are trying to rap or would 100%. like to 100% be in this music industry. Sure. And if they're watching us now and they're like, yeah. okay, but is there really a chance? Is it really worth it? Yeah. Especially if you are the legend and you're leaving, then sure. they're just like, what's yeah, the point? what's the point? Yeah. I hear you, man. Yeah. yeah. So that's, what do you have to say to that person that's, that's watching us right, right now? Sure, yo, it's cliche to say, but like, yo, don't give up. Mm. Believe in yourself. You know, when I started, nobody believed in me. All the friends that I had at school didn't believe in me. The teachers didn't believe in me. Family won't believe in you until they see, oh, you're actually able to earn an income from this and you're mm. able to take care of yourself and you're able to take care of us and you know so please stop expecting everyone to believe in you they're not you know mm. believe in yourself and like convince people to believe in you that's the other thing you actually need to convince these people because they don't owe you anything but what how do you build that how do you convince them by remaining consistent by stay, keep working on your pen i i i'm a I, I, I'm an av advocate mm. for the pen. Like, you know, it doesn't mean you have to sit down and actually write with, the, with your pen. Like, you know, like your phone, your notepad, like use it. Like, you know, not enough. I, don't, I feel like we get like a lot of lukewarm music and a lot of music that has no substance because our artists are not reading and they're not writing. You know, it's such a cool thing because like Jay-Z doesn't write, Lil Wayne doesn't write, so Lil and I can just get in the studio and not write, you mm. know? It's like, no, guys, like take your time with it, be patient, uh, but without making it a long thing, everything godly, you're in patience and time, you know? So easy come, easy go. So don't expect it to happen overnight. I've been doing this 17 years and I'm still not where I want to be, mm. you know? I feel like I've only just scraped the surface of where we're going to, you know? So keep going, remain consistent and stay prayed up, yo. Mudimomoholo, God is real. And um, I wish you guys all the best, man. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you so much, Pretty Ugly, for stopping by thank you. the BTC podcast on our Queen studio. And thank you so much for the conversation. It was very inspiring. Yo, thank you so much. You see, BTC studio, we're out here. The green resembles my album cover. You know, <laughs> dust is out now. Go get it. I uh, appreciate all of you guys. With my dog, me on, I be jagger. Spara para in a Porsche. Pass up for the hardest.